Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. What we have here today is Audi's RS e-tron GT. Yes, this is Audi's maddest, baddest, fastest EV. And not only EV, it is the fastest or the most powerful Audi ever. I'm excited to drive it and let me take you through this car. Let's go. Let us talk looks. This car is actually based on the Porsche Taycan. Underneath the skin, it shares pretty much everything with the Porsche Taycan. But what Audi has done is taken the Taycan infrastructure and build their own car around it. So let me take you through the looks. Let's start with the joint front end. As you can see, this is blacked out, but if you come closer, you can see it has some kind of 3D hexagonal shape texture going on over here. A very handsome face designed for aerodynamic efficiency so that you get maximum performance and maximum range. This is one large front end dominated by these matrix laser headlights. Externally, there is a lot of carbon fiber. This vent cover is also carbon fiber and this is a functional vent over here, which channels air to these optional 21 inch rims. The rims also are designed for aerodynamic efficiency. Again, you have a functional vent over here, which is exactly like the Porsche Taycan. And then you have two charging ports on either side. One supports only AC and the other supports AC and DC charging. If you look at the car only from this front end, you can see a lot of resemblance to the Porsche Taycan. But this is where the Audi charm and design language sets in. The RS e-tron comes with a carbon fiber roof. I personally prefer the fixed panoramic glass roof because it gives more light and a more airy sense inside. But if you want to save weight, the carbon fiber roof is the way to go. There's also carbon fiber on the door trims over here. And at the back, you can see where the Audi UR Quattro design language comes into play. These are super wide, giving it a very muscular stance. And as you can see, there's a carbon fiber diffuser over here. And because it's an EV, there are no exhausts. It even comes with a fully functioning LED light bar and the tail lights have a very strong prominent design language going on inside them. Very three dimensional, superbly textured. All in all, the entire look and feel of this car is very handsome and very purposeful. And you'll be wondering which of the EVs look better, the Porsche Taycan or the Audi RS e-tron GT. Well, looks are subjective and there's no right way or wrong way to decide which one looks better. In my mind, the Taycan looks like a Tomahawk missile, while this one looks like a laser guided bomb. I am conflicted and I can't decide which one I would get, just based on the looks. But this is definitely a very handsome vehicle. The entire silhouette of the car is very muscular, very sporty and very angular. The back goes down in this curvy sport back kind of manner, giving it a very sports car look. The front has this kind of dent on the bonnet, channeling airflow smoothly around the car. The Audi RS e-tron GT can be specced in various trims, colors, options, as per your wishes. You can choose it in red, camo green, and many other options. You can get 19 to 21 inch rims. You can even get the brake calipers painted as per your wishes. On the interiors, you have multiple trims from carbon fiber to wood inlays. Again, depending on what you choose. When Audi launched its first EV, the Audi e-tron, it came up with these side cameras and screens inside, making that car more aerodynamically efficient. It gave seven kilometers of range to the Audi e-tron. They haven't implemented that in the GT. I don't know why. Maybe it's too expensive, but I'm not sure, but it looked pretty cool, it looked phenomenal, and I think it should have been implemented on this car. For my entire review on the Audi e-tron Sportback, click here on the banner. You also get this car in two performance versions, the Audi e-tron GT and the Audi RS e-tron GT. The RS stands for Rennsport, which in German means racing. And why is it called racing? We'll take you through that when we go driving this thing. The 
Audi RS e-tron GT does 0 to 100 in 3.3 seconds and 0 to 200 in 11.8 seconds. All of this is possible due to 850 newton meters of torque provided by the 93 kilowatt per hour battery. The official range on the car is 472 kilometers. Like I told you earlier, we are starting off the day with 413 kilometers. We're going to try and see what happens by the end of the day. Obviously, this is not the perfect scenario for range testing because we're going to be doing random acceleration, random starts and stops. It's hot out there. We're going to be stopping the car, doing photography. The car is going to be running, charging phones, air conditioning on, massage seats on, music system on, blah, 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 the whole shebang. We're going to be using the car as probably how you would, in a way, a slightly more aggressive version of that. But we'll let you know by the end of the day how the battery is. The Audi e-tron GT has two motors, one powering the front wheels and one powering the rear wheels. The rear wheels also get a two-speed transmission, making this an all-wheel drive car with air suspension. And now we are going to launch control it. Dynamic mode on, brakes fully pressed. It's in rear D. Three, two, one, lift off. <laughs> it it pushes me back all the way inside i can feel my lungs getting pushed into the back of my chest going through the seats and i'm not kidding i can't breathe i couldn't breathe over there for a second it's like it's like everything just comes to a standstill it's, everything blows around you it's phenomenal the porsche take and real wheel drive did not do that this is this is something else. This is something else. Oh my God. Oh my God. So let's go again. Three, two, one. <laughs> again. Oh, I don't think I'd want to do that again. And this car can do it all day long because that's how it's been designed. It can do it all day long without the drama, no wheel spin, nothing. Bang, bang, boom, boom. It just goes. You know it's fast. You saw it. You've seen it. We did launch control. You know it. It does some crazy speeds. But how is the handling? Usually all Audis, even the, the RS ones, they tend to understeer. This doesn't. This provides you with a ton of grip and a ton of confidence to be able to take on any sort of corner at any given speeds. Find a corner, point the steering, press the accelerator, boom, it will go. Switch off traction control and it will drift. Keep traction control on and it will grip. Choose your style of driving. Drift mode on, off. The RS e-tron GT comes with air suspension, which makes it very comfortable for long distance driving. It takes up any type of bumps, undulations, any cracks on the road with comfort and ease. You don't feel anything at all. And considering the fact that even you're sitting so low, the low down in the car and the car itself is low, it's still an extremely comfortable ride. Obviously with air suspension, they have the adaptive dampers, so you can change it to comfort, efficiency and dynamic, and the car will raise or lower the height according to the driving mode. In efficiency mode, it lowers the car as much as possible to cut down on drag and make the car as aerodynamic as possible. Same as with performance mode or in dynamic mode. You can't complain about the handling in this car. It's phenomenal. It's proper sports car like. The steering weighs up nicely. It gives you enough feedback and gives you enough confidence to let you know what the car is doing. Yes, it's not as engaging as a sports car would be, but this is a long distance family GT car. You don't want it to be all rough, uneven, or too hard on the, on the driving modes. Let's talk interiors. The Audi RS e-tron GT is built with traditional Audi flair. The build quality is excellent and exotic materials adorn the cabin carbon fiber roof and the suede fabric all over the place the suede is also carried over onto this lovely flat bottom steering wheel 
very nice, very chunky to hold. Carbon fiber trim inlays, which can be replaced by wood. Leather seats with massage and heated features, cool features as well. Again, carbon fiber on the door over here. Just all the designing is so futuristic, so angular and very handsome. Pretty comfortable seats as well, hold you decently. All in all, a great place to be in. One of the unique features is that it has a single screen Audi MMI infotainment. Now the Audi MMI is very easy, very simple, very intuitive to use. One of the best systems on the market. Now in premium cars or in more premium or the premium Audi cars, there used to be a second screen over here which controlled the heating and ventilating and other features as well. This is now all become manual. It's all become button operated, making it super easy to use on the go. You have your drive select buttons over here, traction control off, parking assist. And if you look at this button, it basically manages the reverse, neutral, park and drive. Kind of fidgety and mouse-like, I don't like that. I would prefer something a bit more substantial or chunky over here. I know we don't need that, but I would like to have that. One of the things I don't like about the interiors in this car is the lack of storage space. As you can see, this is where you can keep your sunglasses, but it doesn't fit a full-fledged mobile phone. You have cup holders over here, but nothing to store. The storage over here is pretty small and doesn't fit much. You have decent storage on the side doors, which can fit a large bottle of water, which I have done so. But still you miss some amount of storage. Also, if you've driven Audis before, you know that most Audis come with this nice adjustable center armrest, which is again missing in this car. You kind of get used to driving with one arm up and just cruising down especially in a GT car like this. Let's go take a look at the back. And as you can see, we are seated at the back. The Audi RS e-tron GT has enough headroom, legroom and shoulder room, but it is strictly a four-seater. You don't want anybody sitting in the center. It's going to be super uncomfortable. Materials at the back are again good and built solidly. The seat is a bit too upright. I would like a way to be able to recline it, but that's not happening over here. One of the irritating bits for back passengers is that if you're claustrophobic or don't like tight spaces, you won't like the interior on the Audi RS e-tron GT. Why? Because you have these giant bucket seats in the front and then a small window over here, which doesn't completely open. You don't like that. People will feel trapped, kind of squeezed into this place. The giant panoramic fixed glass roof would have helped in this case. So that's something everyone should spec. Forget the carbon fiber roof. That's not important. Well, the guys at the back get the armrest and the cup holders, which is good. You have your own temperature control knobs over here. This give you access to storage at the back and these seats fold down in the front completely, giving you access to storage in the back and making it a completely giant boot. Let's go. Take a look at the charging ports. Let's talk charging in the Audi RS e-tron GT. This car has two charging ports on either side of the car. But what's the difference? I'll tell you. Oh, open up. Okay, I'll unlock you. Unlock, press the button over here and it opens up. Now this has DC charging as well. And you press this button to open the flap and you can connect your DC charging. AC charging. So on the left hand side, you have AC charging, whereas on the right hand side, you have AC and DC charging. The Audi RS e-tron GT has a 93 kilowatt battery capable of going 472 kilometers on a single charge. If you manage to find a 270 watt high performance charger, the Audi e-tron can charge just from 5 to 80 percent in just 22 minutes. And if you are in a rush, you can charge it just for five minutes and get around 100 kilometers of range. The starting price of the Audi e-tron GT is somewhere around $120,000, which is roughly around 420,000 dirhams. But this RS version with all the bells and whistles, all the options is priced at 660,000 dirhams or $180,000. 
definitely this is competing with the Porsche Taycan. Now what would you want to buy? The Porsche Taycan or the Audi RS e-tron GT? And you just need to choose your brand loyalty. Before buying the Audi RS e-tron GT, my recommendation would be for you to go and test drive the Mercedes EQS, the Tesla Model S and the Porsche Taycan. When you drive all four of these cars, you will understand what suits your driving style, your characteristics and what would you enjoy to drive. So go check out all the other EVs and then let me know in the comments which one would you pick. I definitely do like this car, but the market's heating up and I want to keep my options open. Until next time, see you guys. Thank you for tuning in. You know what to do. Like, comment, share and subscribe. See you guys later. Bye.